Today's model kit is the 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air sedan. This was the Millennium Edition, which was brought out in the year 2000 as a special edition model car. Now the sad story with this is that I actually had this sealed in the box and I was saving it for one day when this could be worth quite a bit of money because it is the year 2000, right? Special edition. The problem is the High River flood came and flooded my basement. We got seven inches of water when the flood hit, but when I had the store downtown, we got five feet of water down there. But sadly, the water got into the plastic wrap and just wrecked the box. The instructions actually survived quite well. The decal sheet, it was destroyed. But what I can show you is earlier boxes from the same kit. So the first box that I have is actually from the 1989 edition of this kit, and that's when the model first came out. So here you see this wonderful red and the white in the back. A really excellent build by whoever built it. And what they did in this kit is they used the old Nova parts, or sorry, the Nomad parts, the Chevy Nomad, and they retooled up a whole new body and other accessories in order to make the Bel Air sports sedan. And here we have a more recent version of the 55 Chevy Bel Air Street Machine. This one came out under RC2, and the model builder here decided to use the custom pieces, or even the hot rod pieces. So there we've got those nice American mag wheels. These were the solid steel kind, same as in the back. And I really love this checkerboard decal in here. You could make like a taxi out of this with the stock version just by painting the car yellow and putting these in the back. Could look pretty cool. A two-door taxi though, I'm not too sure on that one. But uh, if you actually carve a line straight up from here, move the door handle, move the pillar up a bit, put a little post in here and then come down there and put a door handle in here, you can actually build this into a four-door. But that's a little bit of work. So even though I lost the Millennium box top, I thought I would show you the 1989 edition because I think it actually is the best box because it really tells you all the uh, different things that are in this kit, like that it's a two-door sedan, it has a 265 cubic inch, 180 horsepower, four barrel intake manifold, the V8 engine, and all the other good stuff. And again, I just like the paint scheme on this Bel Air. And on this side of the box, we can see how the custom looks. Now this is a real 1989, early 90s style, where you had that really crazy uh, pinstripe up the side and all the chrome has been removed. This is really a Boyd Coddington type of car. There we've got our stock V8 engine and here we've got our custom. Now unfortunately they don't put in this air cleaner anymore, which was a really cool one. This is the one with the uh, sponge air filter. So when it gets dirty, you just unhook the, the cage here and you soak this in some Varsol and clean out the, uh, the gunk from the carburetor and then let that dry and then stick it back in and close the cover up again. Really cool. I don't know why they don't use those anymore. And then here we have our detailed interior. So here we are back again with our Bel Air Millennium Edition and I'll just take these instructions, move them to the side and let Danny the dog explain it all to you. Let's move the box down just a little bit. So here's the body in a nice bag with the cardboard wrapped around it so that the body doesn't get crushed. Now here you can see the High River mud on the plastic. So that's what came in my basement. Luckily it wasn't the mud that hit downtown because that stuff actually <laughs> stripped chrome right off of parts trees. If you thought Easy Off was good, you should have tried that High River mud. That was crazy. So here's another bag of all our parts. We'll take a look at it in a bit. Then we've got our clear glass components, nicely sealed in a bag. Here are the two chrome parts trees. They wrapped a rubber band around here. That's usually not a good idea, but it worked. Um, the reason why it's not a good idea is because if this stuff is still a bit warm when they put it in the plastic, the rubber band can actually squeeze that together. And here we've got a bag with all our tires. This is a Ziploc. I put this in here just to keep everything together. And uh, that's pretty much all we got. The decals again were lost to the floodwaters. Hey everybody! Are you ready to see the instruction sheet now? Okay, let's check it out. So here we've got our Millennium Edition with this beautiful picture of the built-up model. Now if you guys have seen the box here, um, 
in the image in the thumbnail, you'll notice that it is a light green in here and a darker green up here. It's metallic in the back here. That's really all. Really, really cool. So here we got the 55 Chevrolet Bel Air two-door sedan. This is the great write-up you get in here. It tells you everything about the car. And like Trevor said, these instructions did get a bit muddy, but they actually survived pretty well. Down on the instruction sheet here, you can see our important notice right here. This is, of course, before you begin to assemble your model kit. Study the instructions carefully. All right, now we've got our index of symbols that you're going to see in the instructions. Here's recommended tools. You'll need a hobby knife, some tweezers, and a paintbrush. And then down here, if you want to get advanced, these are building tips for the advanced modeler. Any questions, phone this number. I don't think it exists anymore, though. Now here we have the wonderful new for 1955 Chevrolet V8. This is the 265 cubic inch V8 for all you guys that know all this kind of stuff out there. Here we have the two part engine with the transmission molded in the back. The front cover that goes on, the cylinder heads right and left. Here's our oil pan. Now this is a chrome part. It's number 511. So it says for stock you paint it Chevy orange or the street rod you leave it plated. We've got our starter, our generator, and our belts, and our fan right here. Here is the final engine assembly build. Now we've got this nice air cleaner that drops down on the carburetor. Then the intake manifold drops into the top of the engine. We've got our Chevrolet valve covers. Make sure you get that script up the right way. And then we've got our hose here, the radiator hose, left and right hand exhaust manifolds. Now there is the crossover pipe, sort of like the 53 Ford kit, with the exhaust connector kicking off the back. And our distributor up there as well. Now if you want to build the street rod edition, here's the final engine assembly. So instead of the stock manifold and the stock carburetor and the stock air cleaner, you replace it with the chrome air cleaner, the Carter carburetor, this is a four barrel Carter, and then the wheel end intake manifold down here. And there's our radiator hose as well. You also get these really cool chromed fin valve covers and these exhaust headers with the exhaust header tips on them. Now these ones came out of the 55 Chevy Nomad and if you wanted to make a really custom cool engine you can use the injector uh, intake manifold and the velocity stacks from the 55 Chevy Nomad. Here we have the stock wheel assembly. This is for the front and you make two of these and then you've got the one in the back. Now the difference between the front and the back is that the front accepts the plastic pins so the hole is a little bit bigger in the front ones than it is in the back which is accepting the steel pins. See here you can see it says 513 outer front half and here it's 514. The wheel backs are the same part, number 42. And then you get the Firestone tires in there as well. Now for those of you that want to do the street rod, you've got the center line outer front wheel halves. And then you've got this tire here and the wheel backs. And then on the back you've got the deep dish center lines with the wider tire and the other inner wheel half. Now if you really wanted to, you could also switch out the Nomad wheels on here from the AMT 55 Chevy Nomad. Now this is where the instructions get really, really big. Here we've got our rear chassis assembly. This is the rear axle and drivetrain. So you put on your wheels here into the metal axle. You've got the two-piece differential here with the springs. This is molded as one piece. This will go together and the metal axle will go through. Then the entire spring assembly will go onto the chassis. And then you can link up your shock absorbers and the drive shaft here. Panel 8 shows our stock street rod interior assembly. Here you can see our front bench seat with the seat back. You got to glue those two together. There you've got your stock steering wheel or you could switch it for the street rod steering wheel. There's your steering post, your dashboard, your brake and clutch pedals which glue on the back here. And then your interior bucket and these really cool armrests that go in the back. It's got a recommendation here about painting the dashboard. And there's the interior color selection, which is true to the actual car. Now panels 10 and 11 show the kingpin selection height. Now here you can put in the axle in the dead center for the uh, stock ride height. Or you could actually lower it, or actually this would be lowering it, this would be raising it. Um, something to that effect. 
And uh, then here in panel 12, we've got our front suspension. And like you can see here, we've got the front suspension cross member, which will glue here. And then our coil springs, the bottom plate. We've got tie rod, because these are posable steering wheels. And then we've got our lower A-frame here. And you repeat that for the other side as well. Panel 13 shows our body assembly. Now this is the body interior. So uh, here it shows you how to paint on the two-tone if you want to go that way. It says the engine bay is semi-gloss black. We've got our radiator and mounting ball that drops in place here. Then our windshield and our side rear windows. And then our rear window itself. And here's how to paint your Chevy emblems. So keep that in mind. Panel 14 shows the front end going together. So our battery will drop into the engine bay. We've got this firewall insert which comes up underneath. Now the firewall insert is dished, so the curved part is going into the back of the car. So uh, be careful not to glue that backwards. Then uh, we've got our headlight be bezels here with the headlight glass dropping in. We've got separately molded parking lights which glue on and a grill. And if you want the custom here for from the Nomad, there is a special sunken in grill that's pretty cool. So you got to check that out. Then our assembled interior will just pop up in underneath. Panel 15 and 16 show our hood assembly. And here we've got the stock hood with the wonderful hood ornament which drops down. And then our Chevy emblem which glues on the front. For the street rod, we don't use the emblem or the hood ornament, but we cut open the hood here and you can drop in the two-piece hood scoop. Panel 17 shows the body chassis assembly. Now here it's just showing if you used which hood, of course, from steps 15 or 16. But your hood basically just pops into place here. There's your body dropping onto the chassis. And then here it shows the front bumper. And you can put on the optional front bumper guards here as well. And then you've got your license plate which glues onto the bumper and the decal which goes on the plate. Now the license plate is actually sitting straight up and down even though the bumper curves inward. So just keep that in mind. Panel 18 shows the rear assembly for our stock version. Now this is the 506 plated bumper and you've got your bumper guards which will glue on there as well. So check out reference pictures because there isn't really a marking on there as to where these go distance wise. Anyway, there's our chrome taillight bezel and we've got a re red transparent bezel or actually a tail lamp that goes right into here and all that glues onto the back. There's our second Chevy emblem going there. And then we've got our license plate bracket and the license plate gluing on the back on the trunk lid. Now the street rod rear end is really interesting here because this bumper is actually a carryover from the Nomad station wagon. And uh, there's the license plate bracket going on there and the license plate decal going on the back. I guess the curvature would be pretty much the same from the uh, Nomad bumper to the stock bumper. I'm not too sure. But here's our full out tail lights, which will go on the back. Notice there's no chrome around there. So there you go. Now this panel at the back is really interesting because here it shows the exterior color selection for the Chevy Bel Air sedan. And I checked this in a book and it ended up being accurate. So these are the one monocolor type things. So we got onyx black, Seamus green, Neptune green, skyline blue, glacier blue, copper maroon, shoreline beige, India ivory, and shadow gray. And if you're doing the two tones, interesting thing about the 50s for this model, there's two types of two tones. One is just the roof being painted a different color, and the second is the roof and the sides being painted a different color. So, uh, and that's the sides inside the chrome. So here we've got Seamus Green and Neptune Green. We've got uh, Skyline Blue and Glacier Blue. We've got Indian Ivory and Skyline Blue, or Shadow Gray, or Regal Turquoise, or even Harvest Gold. And then we've got Shoreline Beige mixed with Neptune Green and Autumn Bronze. And then Shadow Gray and Coral. So that's pretty cool. And then down here is more specifications for our 55 Chevy. So now we're going to take a look at the plastic parts. Yay! Here we have our body for our 1955 Chevrolet. 
and as you can see AMT really knocked it out of the park with this body look at the uh, nice vent on the cowl here all the detail inside that engine bay the side is really crisp with that wonderful side spear this was unique to the Bel Air even has a Bel Air script and the Chevy logo right there again the posts in the windows are excellent if you look underneath you see all the ribs in there unfortunately there are mold marks these ribs went this way to actually mimic the ribs in the convertible. I was doing some Chevy homework. <laughs> There's our rear end. And there should be little V8s inside here on the curves. You can see a little raised part here. That's where our 55 Chevy emblem will glue in. And underneath is the trunk latch. That's where the key goes in. This is correct here with the little lines that go across. And then our turn signals will glue right between the two lines. That's for an alignment uh, sort of deal. And then we've got our nice headlamps. There is some seam lines going up in here which need to be removed. But look inside that engine bay. That is wonderful. So the reason why I'm actually opening this Millennium kit is that I want to help out one of our viewers. Her name is Belinda and she is working on the same model kit. I'm going to do a future series where I build this just to show her how I would uh, conquer this car and hopefully that can help her in her journey. Here we have the wonderful chassis for our sedan and there's where our tire would go and our gas tank is right here. You can see the molded in exhaust. There's a little teeny line in here and I'm going to show you something in just a minute. What uh, AMT did is they actually reworked the Bel Air Nomad and uh, reworked the back end. So speaking of which, this is what I was going to show you. There's the Bel Air undercarriage. And as you can see, the spare tire in the Bel Air was mounted flat to the floor. And then the fuel cell just went around it. But that's where, if you notice, this line comes in what AMT did is they cut the Bel Air or sorry the uh, Nomad they chopped it along here and they retooled up this Bel Air end for our sedan so that's where the difference lies in between the two parts but basically from up here forward it's the same kit so that means that that great big drag racing chrome front end that's in the Nomad will fit onto this Bel Air And speaking of fit, here's our chassis going into the body. And it ends up fitting in there really, really nicely. Just drops perfectly into place, clicks in, it's wonderful. I built a few of these in the past and I just love them. Here we have our interior tub. And this again is another retooled item that looks really wonderful. Look at how well they got all the door latches and everything in that panel down there. That is just really awesome. They got the carpet in here with the correct seams in the carpet, as well as a little rubber mat. They do have the gas pedal because the other two pedals, like Danny showed the instructions, hang down from the back of the dashboard. Again, really wonderful work in here. Unfortunately, there are the mold marks, but uh, your number 16 hobby blade should be able to get that out. Look at the wonderful texture on that back seat in there. Really beautiful stuff. And of course underneath, no mold marks, nice and smooth. There's the door um, armrests, which go on the back here. I guess they're not door ones, but they are armrests. So again, this is very wonderful work and very, very cool for 1989. Now here I put a couple of parts trees together because I think they kind of go together. There's our dashboard and the floor pedals. This is the seat back and of course this is the bench seat front. Then we've got our two-piece blower, or the scoop, pardon me. And then our wheel backs and those pins. And here we have the two license plate housings. Now the license plate housings do have these big mama mold buttons on the back, so those will have to be removed. There's our entire dashboard. Again, look at how nice this is. It's got the actual texture pattern in here, which was on the Bel Airs. On the 210s and the 150s, this was just flat metal all the way across. But uh, they put in the special insert for the Bel Air, just so you know. Look at it, it's got the nice 
glove box and everything down here. There's our pedals, which we glue into the back here somewhere. The uh, rear seat. Now all the mold marks are on the inside of the seat and in the back of the dashboard. So that's always good. You don't really have to fuss with cleaning those. Look at the nice upholstery pattern on the front seat. This will glue in here just like that. So make sure you got your alignment up and down and tight. Again, that'll be really, really good. Now there are mold marks on the inside of the scoop, so you need a file to get rid of those. Or that number 16 hobby blade again. Same with underneath. And then a bit of flash on the wheel backs. But overall, not too bad. Nothing you couldn't handle. Just cleaning up. And uh, oh, I guess that's about it for those components. So there we go again. Really excellent work by AMT. Now here we've got the engine block and transmission, which are molded as two pieces. Now there is a little bit of a hole in here. I'm not sure if you could put a straight metal axle through that engine block by just boring those out. But at any rate, there's the cylinder heads and our valve covers, the timing chain cover, our exhaust manifolds, then we've got our uh, generator and the other thing that was there. <laughs> Pardon me, I forget. There's our pulleys and uh, there's our battery, the intake manifold for the stock version, the nice tall air cleaner. And I do believe this had the oil bath in it. Then we've got our radiator with the supports. This is that inner piece I was saying with the curve going into the car. And then there's our steering column and the upper radiator hose, our stock steering wheel and our street rod steering wheel. So let's just bring this up in the camera so you can just enjoy all that nice detail on there. Looks really nice, really, really nice. There's the Chevrolet logo on the top of the valve covers. Again, really excellent work. If we turn it over though, oh, you can see some horns on the support wall. There's also mold marks on that support wall. There's mold marks underneath here. Um, this you'll need to take care of so it fits nice on the top of the engine. These ones you also have to get out, but notice that there is a detail in here. That's how you know this is going to the front because that's part of the electrical system or something to that effect. There's a breather tube or oil filler tube, pardon me. Overall, this ends up looking really, really nice. Now I'm going to show two parts trees again because this is our front steering assembly and like I said these are fully positionable turning wheels. Sadly look at where the mold mark is. It's blocking up these two holes. So you're going to have to turn these posts over this way and get a hobby drill. I do believe it's number 16 bit. 1 16th. And you're going to drill out the center hole or these holes so that those pins can pass through them. There we've got our coil springs and all our stabilizer bars and our steering linkage. This actually does steer and it is quite nice but it can be a little fragile so just watch out. And then there's our upper and upper A arms and our lower A arms. Again really nicely done and our drive shaft. So again excellent work from AMT and the fun is in getting this to steer. This parts tree shows those wonderful mag wheels in the back, as well as our fan, the two-piece differential with the leaf springs, and our Chevy hood. And if you notice on the hood, there are these little pins that stick out. That's so that the hood will hinge upward and not actually come out of the car. Now a carryover from the Chevy Nomad is the little square in here. This rectangle is so that you can cut out this and have those velocity stacks stick through. That's from the Nomad. And then uh, you got those buttons again you got to remove. But uh, overall this rear differential looks very accurate to the actual 57 Chevy. So again very nice work from AMT. Next up we get to take a look at our Chrome. Everything in the future is Chrome. And we get two parts trees. Now these are also shared with the 55 Chevy Nomad. But the difference is in some of the little carburetor details and whatnot. And everything that was in this area is on the Nomad Sprue. These are like uh, little side rails and everything for one of the options. And then we've got the second chrome tree. Now you'll notice that the wheels go one, two, three, and then one over here on the other chrome tree. Oh, there would have been some nice mag wheels in here as well. 
but they're not there anymore. There we've got our rear bumper, and I notice a chrome ripple. I'll show that to you. And that's the bumper for the Nomad, or the custom version. There's our grille, the nice taillight bezels, the headlight bezels. Then we've got those ribbed uh, valve covers, shock absorbers, carburetors, intake manifold, parking lights, bumperettes, overriders. There's the tips for these exhausts. These ones are always great. I love these. These will sweep out the sides, sort of like the old Hot Wheel cars, if you turn one of those over. So looking at this, again, these are really nice. I used these on uh, 1940 Ford with the Buick Nailhead motor in there. <laughs> Turned out nice. Uh, turning these over to the back. Again, chrome on here is really, really nice. The only downside is mold marks right underneath on those exhaust manifolds. So, yeah, it kind of gets into the chrome, but that's okay. Now, this is what I was talking about with the holes. These ones are smaller. This one's a little bit bigger. Kind of hard to differentiate here, but uh, you can try to put the plastic peg in and see where that goes. And uh, that'll tell you which one's which. Well, same with the numbers up there. And then if we look at this one up close again, you can see the nice detail in that grill and the little parking lamps and everything else. Chrome distributor there too. Chrome starter motor. Is it? No. Two barrel carburetor. <laughs> okay, look at the detail on the wheels there, the hubcaps. Again, really wonderful. Oh yeah, there's that chrome wrinkle right there. See it? I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, that's kind of irritating. <laughs> anyway, maybe I've got a, a better Nomad bumper somewhere that I can use. But overall, this looks really good. Here we've got our clear plastic components for the kit, and I'm so glad that AMT put them in bags. They actually double bagged the windshield, so that was nice. There's our little tail lamps. Now the ones up top are the stock ones. They've got all the little detail in there. Down below are the customs, and these are really, really smooth. Back in the day, they would have used Lucite, transparent red Lucite, the customizers, like George Barris and those guys. That's what they would have put back there. So that's what's represented on those tail lamps. And then if we bring our glass up, again, you can see just how nice this is. There's our headlights. They've got the waffle grill pattern in them. So you want to make sure that that's going north and south, east and west, and not like 45 degree angle and everything else. 22 degree angle. We don't want any of these headlamps being turned in any way. They've got to be straight up and down and that way, like a like a grate, like a waffle. So there you are. Mmm, waffles. You know what's better than waffles? Chewing on model car tires. Danny, you're not going to be chewing on these tires. Oh, come on. No. All right, anyway. So what we have here are the Firestone tires. These are the ones used in the stock build of our car. And then these ones over here are Goodyear Polyglass GTs. As you can see, they are molded in two different sizes. And these are used in the Hot Rod or Street Rod edition, or version, I should say. So let's just take a look at these Firestones. Again, you can see the Firestone name up there. It's got the nice pie plate kind of uh, ridges on there. And then the tread on these is very straight. Uh, Firestone is not on the back here, so if you wanted black walls, you could use the Firestone on the outside. But there is this nice ridge in here, so you could paint the white wall inside and the paint won't get outside of that ridge. So again, these are very nice tires for stock versions of cars. AMT uses on these on all their cars from the 30s going forward. I do think they changed the mold on them. And then we've got our Goodyear Polyglass GTs. I never did like these ones because the letters look like they're raised too much off the tire. But the tread is really nice on them, so I like that aspect. And then these are the old tried and true Goodyear Polyglass wider tires. The ones with the webs in there that you got to cut out. And they do also have a nice tread pattern, but they are very common. These Goodyear Polyglass GT tires were more of a a late 1960s style tire, whereas these ones would be the old bias, actually these would be, uh, yeah, bias ply tires. 
and these ones would be more bias belted just before they went to radials. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our Millennium Edition 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air Sports Sedan. And if you want to see what model kits we have currently available, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. That's where all our model cars are listed. And I'll leave a little link button down at the end of the video so you can click there and go directly to our website. And then you can see the USA in your Chevrolet. <laughs> at any rate, uh, oh, if you click that membership button down below, you can get your name in the credits at the end of the video. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, happy model building!